Hello, and welcome to New Employee Startup Success. My name is Shirley Leonard. I'm an organizational development and human resources consultant. My company is called Pinnacle Organizational Performance Solutions, and it operates out of beautiful Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. I'm delighted to host our session on behalf of Project Gazelle. Today, I'm introducing two key processes of onboarding and orientation, which when done well, will position your new employee and your business for success faster, easier, and earlier. You might be saying, well, wait a minute, I'm hiring my first employee, or maybe it's my 10th. Why do I need to orient someone to my business? Much less, what's this onboarding thing? Doesn't he or she just show up to the work and I tell them or I show them what to do and we fill out a few forms and bada bing, bada bang, bada boom, they're off to the races. Well, that's one approach, but it's an old one. The downside of that approach is that it will take your new employee longer to learn the ropes that way as he or she may not have the context for what needs to be done. We live in a new work world and with multiple generations working together, each generation has different needs, different perspectives and definitely different learning styles. If we can shift our approach by carving out the new employee startup tasks into these two processes of onboarding and orientation, then we can more easily achieve the objectives of each of these processes because they each do different things. Let's talk about onboarding first. The objectives of onboarding are, in my world, about four. So onboarding is familiarizing the employee to your business's ways, policies, procedures before they even start work. And so that includes things like pay and benefits sign up to ensure the employee is paid correctly, appropriately, on time and taxes are correctly deducted and submitted on behalf of that employee so that there's no hiccups at the very beginning and that they do get paid for their, their first pay period. Onboarding includes ensuring the mandatory licensing or certifications that this role might require has been submitted to you and that they are therefore able to perform the duties that are expected. Thirdly, it includes security clearance for accessing your company's IT systems. So things like forms have been completed and the employee is able to start the role without any downtime while waiting for IT access to be granted. For logging onto the system, ensuring passwords have been provided and that they can access the IT support that they need if they run into any problems. Onboarding includes reviewing and understanding the business terms and conditions of employment. This is where the usefulness of the employee agreement that I've mentioned in the recruitment video is so helpful. If the employee agreement concept is unfamiliar to you, please do call me. I'm happy to discuss this with you because it's an essential best practice to have an employee agreement for every employee in your business, whether they're full-time, part-time, casual, hourly, regardless of the size of your business. It's a risk management tool. Now let's focus on what orientation is. I have five outcomes that are the product of the orientation period. So first of all, orientation is a deliberate engagement process for the employee with the leader, with the role, with the department, and with other team members if there are more employees. Secondly, orientation is a fluid long-term process. It should not be a one-time event. It cannot be. And orientation is about how the work as detailed in that essential job description gets done through individual and other relationships. Fourth, it identifies and extends any supports and resources available to help our new employee be successful in these essential first three months. And finally, it prepares the employee to successfully complete your probation period so that they get a pass and you're not starting all over again with another recruitment. So three tips for planning and implementing a successful approach. Number one, use that job description introduced in all the other videos to guide creating your onboarding and orientation plans. Secondly, acquire and use a template to build and implement your orientation plan. And third, deliberately engage your new employee to identify opportunities and barriers and exchange authentic feedback during those pivotal first three months of employment. Remember, you wanted somebody, you wanted to recruit somebody 
who had potential to help your business grow. So we need to ask them. We need to make them feel comfortable to be able to provide that information to us. Now let's talk about managing expectations, both yours and the new employees. I recommend asking five priority questions of new employees throughout the first three months. These questions are number one, do you understand the expectations of your job? If they don't, it's a non-starter. We've got to stop and go back to go. Um, they, they need to know what the expectations are. They can't be successful otherwise. And we don't want people wasting their time and your time. Secondly, what part of the job do you like the best and the least? Because what they like the best, they tend to want to do faster and repeat, repeat the, the, those tasks. What they like the least, they might procrastinate on. So let's surface that early on so that we can address it and help them. Do you feel you fit in with the team? Do you feel heard? That's a really important one, especially in our new work world of diversity, inclusion, uh, and making sure that everybody feels safe. Fourth, what ideas do you have for improvement within the role? So process improvements, task improvements, improvements in communication, those types of uh, ideas that you're looking for. And five, what would be helpful to support you in this role? For example, would a buddy be helpful if there is one? Uh, would some specific training be helpful? And perhaps, and sometimes it is as simple and as necessary as having regularly scheduled check-in meetings with you, the leader. So notice that four out of those five questions are open questions. Open being they are intended to invite and engage you and the new employee in conversation. There was only one closed question, and that was the question around, do you feel included in your team? Do you feel welcome? Do you feel heard? Those ones are invite a yes or no answer. And I asked it that way deliberately because they either do or they don't feel included. They either do or don't feel welcome. They either do or don't feel heard. And if they don't, then we need to know what's up. And we do that through probing questions. And if they do feel all of those things, then great. Then we wanna ask, what is it about the team that's making you feel welcome? Again, follow up with probing questions. The employer who takes the time with a new employee to do this work is positively influencing the employee experience and shows by example and leadership the culture of your business, the culture that you've worked so hard to create and you want to maintain it. More successful at managing and meeting the employer's expectations, which will then hopefully avoid misunderstandings and mitigate risk for both parties. And lastly, it creates a trust relationship that serves the common interests over our long term. So three questions to ask yourself as you go forward in your planning. First, does my orientation guideline template reflect those tasks of the job description? If it doesn't, then we're off course already. Secondly, how will I ensure I spend the necessary time with my new employee to effectively orient him or her? Time is really important. They don't learn it by osmosis. It takes your time, but the time you invest up front is the less time that you invest down the road to do repeatable tasks with this employee. Third, how will I know my new employee feels engaged, is gaining knowledge, and is increasing their sense of confidence in the role? So three very important questions to ask yourself. In summary, taking this time to onboard and orient pays off in both the short and the long term. It shows the caliber of your business, it supports your brand, and it enhances the retention of this very valued and valuable employee that you've spent time, money, and effort to recruit. So now let's help them be as successful as they can be early on. Better oriented employees provide better customer service, and your customers will thank you for that. Another bonus, this approach supports achieving one of your primary goals, focusing your time on doing the things that you love to do that you're so good at and growing your business. In our next video, we'll explore the multiple hats that employers and leaders um, need to be executing on. Those multiple hats are managing, delegating, coaching, developing, and disciplining 
and which we as business owners and leaders wear with our employer employee relationships. So whether we have one employee, 10 employees, 100 employees, we're wearing those hats all the time and just get dizzy. Another opportunity to show your courage muscle, the rewards of investing in these relationships. Again, they're so integral to both your current and future success. So nothing speaks to success like retention of your employees because they will attract others to your business. They will attract other potential candidates to come work with you as your business grows and their way in, in which they engage with your customers that you have worked so hard to attract into your business that they are talking you up um, because of the nature of the employees that you are you that you are engaging. So thank you for watching this video of new employer success with onboarding and orientation. And if you'd like to talk with me about your new employee programs, please do contact the Project Gazelle office. They can be reached by phone at 780-875-5458 or by email at Project Gazelle, that's G-A-Z-E-L-L-E -L -L -E, number two at albertacf.com. So happy onboarding and orientation. Create a welcome that your new employee will remember because they will. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful day.